Today we have a really timely subject, voting in Arizona, what you need to know. And we are joined by the Assistant Attorney General for our Economic Community and Development Unit, Catherine Belzowski. Catherine has been at the department for quite some time and uh, started out as a line attorney and made her way up to Assistant Attorney General and has worked on voting rights for the past, gosh, maybe like eight or 10 years. Um, so she is very familiar with the long legacy of litigation uh, relating to protecting the nation and Navajo people's voting rights in Arizona uh, and advocating to ensure greater access to the polls in the state, um, as well as um, just ease of, of voting uh, and, and, and facilitation of uh, accurate submission of Navajo votes in the Arizona county, federal and state voting processes. Uh, so we're happy to have Catherine here bringing that perspective. And uh, just a reminder, uh, Yet a she a Ethel Branch and she be put what ni nishla nakai bushes chin sit ni jeni dasha che ado nakai dasha nala. I'm the nation's 13th Attorney General. Previously served as the 11th Attorney General, and during that time, we did file a lawsuit in the state of Arizona um, during the election for Kirsten Cinema. That's how I remember that that era um, and so um, have have some familiarity as well in terms of the voting rights history uh, for Navajo people in the state of Arizona um, and um, have been very happy to see the outcome from that litigation. Uh, we did have vigorous settlement negotiations and the current governor for the state was the secretary of state uh, during the, the period in which there was implementation of uh, aspects of, of settlement. So uh, very happy to see those things implemented and improvement in access to the polls for Navajo people in the state of Arizona. And uh, so going into this next voting season, Catherine's going to give you some background on some of the things that you need to know to better protect your right to vote in the state of Arizona. Um, and that's very helpful to us, you know, as things arise, certainly let us know uh, because things may reach the level of needing to trigger litigation. That could be even prior to uh, the regular voting day. These are things that could happen during the primaries in the um, things that happen leading up to the primary. Uh, so Catherine's gonna going to give you some tools and some information in terms of how to make sure that uh, our people's right to vote in the state of Arizona is protected. So Catherine, I'm going to hand things over to you. Thank you, Attorney General. Um, good afternoon, everybody. As the Attorney General stated, my name is Catherine Bolzowski. I'm an I am the Assistant Attorney General with the Economic Community Development Unit. One of the issues that our unit works on is monitoring state and federal voting issues that may come up and working closely with our partners at the state and federal level to make sure that those issues are addressed in a timely manner so that they're not preventing Navajos from voting. Um, I do wanna give a shout out to the Attorney General Branch. She, during her tenure, last tenure as the Attorney General, she really made voting a priority for the Department of Justice and worked hard to help implement you know, the settlement agreements and help um, address some issues that were affecting Navajo voters. So we are happy to really continue her work that she started here during her first um, her first term as attorney general. I just wanted to, um, this particular uh, broadcast is focused on Arizona voting issues because there have been quite, uh, there have been a couple changes to the Arizona voting. Um, and so just to kind of bring people up to speed on those. Um, also, there is the presidential preference election that is occurring this uh, Tuesday, March 19th. And so we are hoping that this will help encourage people, you know, remind people that that is happening in Arizona and encourage our citizens to come out and vote for it. So um, again, to kind of give a broad view, we Navajo Nation obviously is in three states. It's in Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona. We deal with about seven counties in Arizona, in New Mexico, three counties in Arizona, and one county in Utah. And uh, state and federal election issues 
really happen, you know, start at that county level. We find that the better relations that we have with the counties um, and the um, uh, more, you know, educated the county workers are to voting issues on the Navajo Nation, the smoother the election process seems to go for, for the people. So we're really happy, actually. We have been working very hard since the 2018 to establish those good relationships with the counties to make sure, especially during COVID, we had very successful um, coordination, both with the counties, with the local communities and with Window Rock to make sure that people had access to polling and uh, to polling locations and access to ballots during COVID, um, during the COVID time. So wanted to also give a shout out to a lot of, I know a lot of the local chapter communities really stepped up during 2020 to help provide that access to their citizens and make sure there's, and work with the counties to make sure their citizens had, were, had that access, even though we were in kind of a scary place. So we can't do state and federal election administration without the assistance of our local government communities. It's really at that level that they work to provide the poll, not only the polling locations, um, but also to assist in finding poll workers um, for the for the counties to help make sure that those locations stay open, provide um, any kind of accommodations that are needed for dis disabled voters. Um, and it, that really, you know, really helps us when we're talking to the state and the um, counties when we have that's a good support and coordination from the chapters. So also a shout out to all of the local chapter leaders who I know communicate on a regular basis with the counties as well about you know, all these issues. Um, so in Arizona, we've had some, you know, it's never a dull moment. In Arizona on voting issues, seems like there's always something happening every election cycle, and this, this election cycle is no exception. Um, we had the past legislature, uh, Arizona legislature did pass some laws that are affecting um, this, the elections happening in this year in 2024. Uh, so we'll go through those. I did want to, again, just kind of highlight, I think, for the purposes of two, some things for the purposes of Tuesday and kind of go through what the different, how the different counties will be running the elections. So based on the county that you are located or that you vote in, you kind of have an understanding of what's happening and what that poll, you know, what may ha be happening at your polling location. After that, we'll get, we'll start talking about some of the things that are coming up changes in primary dates that are occurring both at the Navajo and Arizona level in July, and then the general election coming up in November, which is a presidential election. So we anticipate a lot of um, interest in making sure that all Navajo people's votes will be counted during that election cycle. Because as everyone is probably aware, Arizona is a swing state in the presidential election and a lot of attention is being focused on, that elec on the election in November. And I think also after um, we'll be having more of these kind of series, you know, as the different, you know, dates kind of get closer, just to remind people on like um, when early, you know, when your registration deadline is coming up and kind of, we'll probably have a discussion just based on the, you know, registration, how you register to vote, really kind of go more in depth in that. And then also, you know, when the primaries are coming. So hopefully that, you know, this will be a continuing series. So this, if you missed today, you won't be out of luck. You'll, we'll continue to provide more additional information and, you know, provide updates too if things are changing or locations are changing in your respective counties, just so every all Navajo citizens are up to date. Um, so for the three counties for the election on Tuesday, the presidential primary election, presidential preference, sorry, election that is occurring on Tuesday, this is an election that in which you must be a registered voter of a particular primary so or particular party, so a Democrat, Republican, um, or the, you know, the top two, but you have to be registered with that or identify with that party in order to vote on Tuesday. And you can only vote in that party's, um, on that party's ballot. So if you're a registered Republican, you would go to your polling location and you would vote the Republican ballot, Democrat, you vote for Democrat. If you are an independent voter or you don't identify with a particular party, then you are not um, eligible to vote in Tuesday's um, election since these are really just for the parties and to get the part and to vote for who's going to represent um, the party in the upcoming primary and uh, general election. So in Apache County, each of our counties, I'd say, has different way of running their elections. So we have Apache, Navajo, and Cocomino County. And each county runs their election a little different. 
So if you are a registered voter in Apache County, you're going to be voting in what we call a precinct based system, which means that you have to vote at your registered precinct location. Every precinct, it does have a polling, we'll have a polling location open on Tuesday in which precinct voters can vote at. Um, and just to, I did want to see if I have pulled it up here. So the, in the precinct, they should open in theory, uh, they should open at 6 a.m. and allow voting up till 7 p.m. I know that that has been an issue that has come up in the past is the timeliness of the opening of our polling locations. I will say we at the Department of Justice are very interested in hearing if a polling location is not open on time. Um, in the past, what we have done, um, in the past two election cycles actually, when uh, we've had issues with Apache County polling locations locate, opening on time, and we have uh, taken action in the state district court to file motions to make sure that those polling places remain open for, you know, for the equivalent amount of time they're closed. So if they open an hour late for the, you know, requesting the courts to mandate the county to keep those locations open another hour to make up for that lost hour in the beginning. So if you do vote in Apache County and you go to your polling location and they're not open on time, you know, please um, email the Department of Justice and we can work, or your delegate. I will say we also work very closely with um, council delegates to make sure that, uh, you know, any concerns that they're hearing on election day from voters, um, work with them to try to address them and keep them updated so they can communicate that information to their constituents as well. So please feel free, you know, please email us, let us know that, and we can work to make sure that that's addressed. Because if a polling location opens late, it should definitely stay open longer to accommodate the voters. Um, so Apache County, you'll go to your assigned precinct. Uh, voters, you'll go to your assigned precinct and you will show them your identification, something that is consistent across all the um counties, no matter what county you're voting in, is that you will need to show some form of identification at the time that you go to vote. So not only do you have to be a registered voter prior to the, um, election day, you also have to um, take your ID to the polls with you to make sure that you receive a ballot. Uh, what kind of, what are forms of identification you may be asking yourself? What should I be bringing to the polls? Um, great question. There's a long list of different uh, items that you can take to the polls to make sure that you have uh, in order that they'll accept for purposes of voting. One of them, and I'll just kind of read a couple of them here. Um, a valid Arizona driver's license is probably the easiest in the sense of, you know, most accessible to voters. So if you have your driver's license, that is sufficient form of identification. Um, an Arizona non-operating identification card, a tribal enrollment card or other form of tribal identification, or another valid um, United States uh, federal, state, or local government issued identification. So these all have to have photos on them. So if you don't have a photo, what you then have to do is you have to bring two of other kinds of identification with you. So if you have a driver's license with your photo on it, that's sufficient, that's fine, just bring that. One of the things that we have um, with our tribal, our forms of tribal enrollment and tribal identifications, which is so, uh, usually called a certificate of Indian blood, a CIB, is that they don't have photos on it. So if you just take your CIB to the, your precinct polling place and use it as identification, they're going to ask you for one other form of identification to confirm your identity. So that's the kind of difference. If you have one of the forms of identification with a photo on it, you just need that one. If you have something that doesn't have your photo on it, you're gonna to need to bring two documents with you to the polls in order to cast your ballot. So in addition to bringing your CIB, you could bring your vehicle insurance card if you have an insurance card for your vehicle, um, any kind of bank statement that you may have lying around, a util your NTUA utility bill, would be sufficient, you would bring your utility bill and your CIB together, and you would bring those to the polls and that would serve as your proof of identification. So other things would include, I'm just kind of reading from the list, the Arizona Vehicle Insurance Card, recorder certificate, any other kind of valid government issued identification that maybe doesn't have your photo on, may not have your photo on it, any mailing from the county, um, like one of the things that I get for my county when I register to vote is I get a little card in the mail that says my, pre, you know, that I'm registered, my precinct, where my precinct is, what my, no, the precinct number is, the different, um, 
like congressional districts that I voted. So, but it doesn't have my picture on it. So you could bring, if you have that from the county, you can bring that with you. Um, or, you know, like I really say, you're a big statement as well. So these are the things you just have to remember. When you go on election day to vote, you have to bring that ID. And it, ha if you, it has to have your, if you have an ID of your picture on it, you just need to bring that one. If you have an ID but doesn't have your picture, like your CIB, you need to bring two forms of identification, like your NTU utility bill and your CIB. If you bring both, both of those to the polling location, that should be sufficient form of proof of identification. Again, if you have any problems, if you bring those forms and you get any pushback from poll workers saying that these aren't sufficient, again, another great opportunity to call, uh, call your delegate, <laughs> call a delegate or call the Department of Justice. Um, let the, let us know that that's something that, that you're being denied the right to vote, even though you have these forms of identification with you. And that's something that we can try to address hopefully while you're at the poll so that you're able to cast your ballot. Um, so you go to your poll, your, so again, in Patchy County, you're going to go to your precinct, right? You're going to try to, to, and how do you, and you say, Catherine, I don't know where my precinct is. How do I find that? Um, you can do one of two things. You can look on your, you can see if you have any mailing from the county that identifies the precinct that you'll be voting in. You can call the county and see if they, and ask them and say, Hey, where, uh, where am I voting at? You can also look at the, make, to make sure, and this is a good tool to just to make sure that you're registered. The Secretary of State's office in Arizona runs what's called an Arizona voter information portal. Um, and you can enter if you have access to the internet, which I know is not super prevalent on the nation, but if you are, you know, between now and when you vote, if you're able to, you know, this weekend when you're going into town, if you stop by your local library and you wanna just check out check out the, uh, it's called my.arizona.vote. And I actually will pull it up here for you guys so that you can see it, what it looks like. Here you go. So this is the website that you can go to and you can, as you can see, you can put in the county that you're, you're located in, your last name, your date of birth, and this will show up your, and this will show uh, your registrate your voter registration. You can see you can confirm um, that you're. It will confirm that you're registered. It should also let you know what precinct you're. Uh, you should be voting in. And I think that you know if you have time and access, this is a great tool to use because it will prevent you know, especially in Apache County, you may think based on where your residence is, um, you're voting in one precinct, but little known to you, you may you know depending on the how the county recorder um, register, you know, inputted your voter registration information into their system, you could actually be assigned to a different precinct. Um, it's kind of our precinct lines in the counties do not follow chapter boundaries. So just to, you know, just to highlight that you may be in one chapter, but the chapter may be divided amongst precincts. And so you may have to go vote at another chapter house different from the one that you would usually vote or that you're registered or you're associated with. So that's why checking ahead of time what precincts you're actually located in can be really helpful um, to avoiding, you know, saving time. So you're not driving back and forth between precincts, trying to find which one you're supposed to be at because, you know, time is money and gas is not free. So hopefully, you know, feel, use this tool. If you don't have access to the internet, you can always call the county recorder office. Um, in this case, the Apache Recorder Office, you can stop by one of their locations. The Apache County actually has several locations on the nation, um, on the nation, so that you don't have to go all the way down to St. John's to confirm. You can stop in. There's one located in Chinle, there's one in Fort Defiance, and there's one in Ganado. So if you're driving through any of those areas, you can just pop into their office. They are open um, 8 to 5. I say that a little hesitantly because I sometimes I think they're closed on Fridays. So at least Monday through Thursday, um, you can hop into the, one of those offices and confirm, you know, say this is have them look you up and they can tell you what precinct you're, you should be voting in. Um, another very helpful tool. Those are all those locations are also where you can do early voting. So not for this election because our um, early voting time is closed, but for March 19th, but for, you know, your um, for the primaries in July or for the November elections, you can stop by and it doesn't have, you don't have to be um, 
part of, you don't have to be registered in the precinct of Fort Defiance or Shinley to vote at those locations. The county recorder's office during early voting serves, um, you, anybody can vote at them. So they're open to all residents of Apache County. So even if you're from Lukachukai, if you stop in Chinle at the county reporter's office, you know, and you just to inquire about where your precinct is, you can also vote. You can also cast your ballot right there in that. So that's something that's very helpful. However, if you go out, if you happen to go outside the early voting period, they can always let you know where your precinct location is. Um, so th that's for Apache County. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything uh, else to note about Apache County. I did want to pull up the precinct list for the March 19th election. And this is only for March 19th because they haven't, they have established, they haven't established the polling locations for the primary in July or the November general election. But for the March 19th election, they have established the locations they're going to be utilizing on Tuesday. And I will just, that is currently on their website. Let me just make Get that one up. Let you guys have a chance to look at that. Put your eyeballs on it. I can find it. There it is. Okay. So this is the list of all Apache County polling locations for this Tuesday. So you can, and it's on their website, ApacheCountyArizona.gov. Um, it's under the presidential preference election, the location. So these, if you're not sure which, where your precinct poll, if you know your precinct, but you're not sure where the polling location is, or you just want to confirm because you don't want to be driving all around the precinct trying to find it, um, you can check out their website. You can also call, again, the county recorder's office and they can let, they will let you know. Um, but uh, there is the list currently um, on the, on the website. So this is just here. This is just wanted to share that with you guys. And this is for the entire county. It's not just for the Navajo Nation. Um, but you can see St. Michael's, right? You're going to be vote If you're in the St. Michael's precinct, you'll be voting at the Mother Mary Mother of Mankind Parish at the gym. It has the address here and has the phone number for the location. All right. So that's Apache County. Again, and they should, if you have any problems, feel free to let us know. Very interested. If you do go to the wrong precinct, let's just say um, that there is a precinct change or you just happen to go to the uh, wrong one, they should still provide you access to a ballot. Um, one of the changes that happened in the um, Arizona Election Procedure Manual, which uh, is this past time, every time, uh, before the election, the uh, state has to pass an pr election procedure manual um, that kind of instructs the counties how the elections are supposed to be run, some of the more procedure, if you will, uh, the minute procedure of the election itself. And one of the um, provisions that was added in this last election procedure manual that the Secretary of State drafted, and I will say that, you know, a sh just a shout out to the um, Speaker's office and the President's office, um, they both provided comments to the, uh, collectively co provided comments to the Secretary of State's office on some changes that they wanted to see in this election procedure manual to help make voting easier for Navajo voters. And the Secretary of State's office was very amenable to the Navajo Nation's comments and actually adopted all the comments that the nation proposed. So we really appreciated our state partners here listening to the concerns of the nation and implementing some of those changes, or all of the changes really, into the current election procedure manual. Um, so the current one talks about how, you know, how it does provide specific guidance to the counties on how they're supposed to deal with out of precinct voters. Um, and so one of the options for an out of precinct voter is that if you do go to the wrong, um, location to vote, you should be provided a provisional ballot to vote on the accessible voting machines. So every polling location on the Navajo Nation, no matter what county you're in, will have an accessible voting machine. These machines are used primarily for disabled voters to allow to provide them assistance in cast, casting their ballots. But it's also a tool that can be used for out of precinct voters who go to the wrong location. So if you go to the wrong location, you should be given this opportunity. They shouldn't just tell you, oh, you're at the wrong place, like too bad, so sad. They should say, oh, you're at the wrong location. You can either go to, they should be able to look up and tell you where the correct location is that you should be voting at. But if they're, but in addition, they should also say, hey, you can go vote at your precinct, the correct precinct if you want, 
or you can utilize this accessible voting device that we have behind us um, and cast a provisional ballot. And what that they would that will do is they'll print out, they have all the precinct machine. They would identify the correct precinct for you, print that out, give you the ballot, you will vote it just like you would vote any a uh, normal ballot. And then they will they will either write that in there if they're able to, and it all depends on their connectivity to the internet issues. Um, they'll have you sign the poll book electronically and they'll able, be able to count your ballot right there because they'll be able to pull up to see if you voted at any other locations. If you haven't, they'll just, they'll count it. If they don't have access to the internet or they're at a location that doesn't have internet connectivity, um, what they'll do is they'll take your provisional ballot back to the county. They'll make sure that you didn't, right, you didn't go off and vote at your correct precinct or vote early or vote somewhere else, you know, just to make sure that you're not putting your votes in multiple places. Um, and if you haven't, then they'll count that ballot. Um, so this is, a, again, this is an option that should be provided to every voter at every precinct um, on the Navajo Nation. And so if you go to your precinct and they say, this isn't the right precinct, if, they, if you go to vote at a precinct in Apache County and they say, no, sorry, you're actually registered at a different one, you need to go there, and they don't give you this option, I wanna know that too. <laughs> because they're specifically required to. So, and this is um, something new from previous election cycles. So we're really hoping that this is something that the counties are have educate, right? And a lot of this just has to do with the counties educating their poll workers because the election director, she may have this information in St. John's, but you know, unless the poll workers at all these various locations have been adequately educated on these changes, um, and these requirements, that's where I think we see a lot of the disconnect. You know, the election, the county administration may understand what they're supposed to do, but the election mm -hmm. poll workers who may not work with these, you know, documents and rules and procedures on a daily basis, they may not be as familiar and uh, may, may be misinforming mm -hmm. voters, maybe based on their knowledge of how things run, ran during prior elections. Um, so again, if you're not given that opportunity, please let me know. <laughs> I would be very, I'm very interested in that because this is, I will say, you know, in the last election cycle in 2022, Apache County did have the highest rejected ballots for out of precinct voters. Um, and so out of all the counties, we had one in Cocomino, none in Navajo, 300 plus in Apache. So we're, you know, this provision that the Secretary of State added into the election procedure manual is really an attempt to help address that issue to help reduce the number of people whose ballots are rejected because they're voting out of precinct. Um, and so, we, you know, but it's only as good as the county that implements it. So if a county does a really good job of implementing this um, process, you know, we should hopefully see a drastic drop in the rejected ballots of Apache County. Um, but if this information has not been communicated to the voter, to the poll workers, um, then we may still see a lot of ballots being rejected for out of precinct voting. So let's just, again, let me know. Very interested in this um, and making, and I will say we do meet regularly with the counties to try to address, you know, any issues and make sure that all of these things are being properly invented, but we really don't know until election day when the voters are out there trying to implement, trying to utilize, utilize the right to vote, trying to um, exercise, there we go. <laughs> exercise their right, to, my morning coffee is wearing off, uh, exercise their right to vote that we really see if this stuff is actually working. So, and that is dependent on voters letting us know. So let us know. Um, I will say we also work, they won't be out here on this election cycle, but we do work closely with the Arizona, um, the Arizona Voting Rights, um, it's not a center, Arizona Voting Rights, Native Vote, there we go, Arizona Native Vote. Um, and they usually send out poll workers on election day. They'll be out during the November election. And so a lot of times, you know, they help us be some, they are additional eyes and ears on the ground for us. So please feel free to talk to them. Um, they are there. They coordinate with the nation and with our leaders to help us make sure that on election day, you guys are not being turned away as best we can. Um, so the other thing to note, I feel like there's one more thing to note about Apache County. Oh, uh, I guess the last thing to note too is that why is Apache County a precinct-based system, whereas, as we're going to talk about with Navajo um, and Cocomino, they're less precinct-based? And I will say that that is a decision at the discretion of the county. So um, the county board of supervisors, 
um, decides how they want the elections to be run. So it's pursuant to Arizona law, it's a county-based decision. It's not at the state level or the state legislatures that decide, um, it's at the county level. And I would note a lot of stuff is at the county level for elections. And so we, that's why having good relationships with the counties really is so important because we can have good relationships with the state at the state level all we want, but unless we can, you know, the counties are working with us and talking with us, we're always going to run into problems. Um, but I will say the um, Apache County Board of Commissioners has not adopted vote centers, which we'll talk, which we'll talk about, which some other counties have. Um, and that's one reason they continue to um, be a precinct based county but it could always change. And I know that that's something that our leaders, both the president and speaker have been really looking, trying to push for and trying to get the county to open up, um, open up their minds to having more vote center based locations. But hopefully, like I said, having access to these accessible voting machines will really help um, lower Apache County is rejection about precinct ballots and help address some of those precinct issues that we've seen in past election cycles. All right, so enough about Apache. Um, going over to Navajo County. So Navajo County is completely different. If you live in a Navajo County, you have no precincts. You have no precincts. None of this precinct talk that I just went into um, into great detail is applicable to you. You, your county is 100% um, vote centers. So the Board of Supervisors in Apache County made the decision multiple, probably prior to 2018, um, election cycle to be an all vote base um, county. So what does that mean? That means that they don't have a polling location in every precinct. So they still have precincts. And if you're in, in Navajo County, you may still have an assigned precinct number. Actually, I take that back. I think they they may still have precincts. I actually, this was, I know this was a, I wanna retract that because I know this was a conversation that they were having at the county level. And so I'm not hundred mm. percent sure that, exactly how it played out. But um, but you may still have precincts. Let me say it that way. You may still have precincts, but you don't vote in those precincts. You vote at a vote center. And so instead of having one per precinct like Apache County does, um, and I would say note that Apache County has 31 precinct locations on the nation. Um, Apache County um, just has vote centers and that kind of consolidates the number of um Loca voting locations they have on the nation. So while they may have fewer locations, um, I think it was only 17 during, the, during they only have 17 on the nation this election cycle. And I will say that is proportional to the population. Navajo County has almost, has about half, Apache County has twice as much population on the Navajo part of the reservation than Apache County, the Navajo County has. Apache County has more. Um, Navajo County has less. So Navajo County has about a 17 vote centers and that allows, but anybody can vote at them. So no matter where you live in Navajo County, you can vote at any of the vote centers. You can vote at one down in Holbrook and Snowflake. You can vote at one in, you know, all the way up in Kayenta. It doesn't matter. As long as you're a registered voter in, a, in Navajo County, you can vote at any of the vote center locations um, on election day. You still need to have ID. You still need to have IDs. So you still need to bring those, um, you know, either one form of photo ID or two forms of non-photo ID with you when you vote at the vote centers. But it doesn't matter. You know, the whole idea of like, am I going to the right place? Where's, you know, trying to figure out where you live. Um, you don't know that. You just have to be, in, as long as you're in Navajo County. And I will say you do need to vote in the proper county. Uh, that is one of the things that we've heard back from um, some of our county counterparts is sometimes people from Apache County may just go to Navajo County to vote. Um, uh, they see that more. I think they see more Apache County voters going over to Navajo than Navajo going to Apache. But just FYI, you do need to vote in your county. Um, so sometimes though, if it's, if they have, just an FYI, if they do see that you guys have voted in the wrong county, they will try to get your vote to the right county before the polls close, but it's not a requirement. They just do that, do that at the kindness of their heart. Um, so vote in your county. So Navajo County is very easy in that way. <laughs> it's good to, it's, and they have, and it also re, uh, reduces the amount of out of, of ballots that are rejected for out of precinct voting, right? Because they have zero, because it doesn't matter. No one's ever rejected for voting. Ballot is ever rejected because they didn't vote at the right precinct. 
Um, and so moving over to our next location, and just an FYI, I, I did want to pull up the Navajo County. They have, um, they've actually did it for their polling locations. They have a list, but they also have, I think, which is a little more helpful, at least for me, because I'm more of a visual learner. Um, they have a Google map on their website. So if you want to see where the polling location is um, for Navajo County, you go to their, um, to the Navajo County website. And you can, um, and if you click the link for Navajo polling locations for the 2024 election cycle, um, they're using the same locations that they used in 2023. I think that they used in the previous years, my understanding is. And even though it says up here that was published in December of 2023, it's just because they already had their polling locations identified by that time for this election cycle. Um, oh, notifications. So this, you know, you can go to the map, hit the precinct, tells you the description where the pre, you know, where it is. It's the Pinyon at the Pinyon Chapter House and it tells you the location of it. Um, and all the, I should note, all the uh, vote center locations are all open. You know, everyone should have the same time. So just something that's consistent across counties. Everyone's open the same time. It's not that Navajo counties are open different times than Apache counties or Cocomino counties, no matter what county you're voting in county you are voting in, you should um, be able, you go at the same time as every other county. It's just the locations and manners that of voting that change. Um, so that's a statewide rule. So those are your Navajo locations. So hopping on over to our third and last county, we have Cocomino County. And Cocomino does a hybrid of what Apache and Navajo County does. So that's why, uh, you know, you got your all precinct voting, then you have your all vote center voting, and then you get to Cocomino and they'll do on election day, they do a hybrid. They have some places in uh, Cocomino County that operate as vote centers, right? Where anybody from the county can vote in and it doesn't matter what your precinct is. And they also have some precinct based voting. Um, on the Navajo Nation specifically, they have one vote center on election day at, in Tuba City. And then they will, the rest of the locations will be precinct based. Um, so if you're in Cocomino, you can either go to one of the vote center locations and I will, I actually, let me just, this is helpful. I'll pull, let me pull up the um, Cocomino County website, so share, let me share it so you guys can kind of see, I think again, visuals are great. Um, so let me pull this up so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So on, again, this is on the Cocomino County website. Um, cocomino.az.gov if you want to look it up on your own want to reference this so they these are their vote centers right these are all the locations that if you happen to be in flag on election day and you want to vote flag staff on election day you can go to any of these locations and you can vote at them also there's one in tuba city the tuba city they actually um cocomino county like um apache county has a um election office in on the nation. Theirs is in Tuba City. So that's an office they run, they staff all year round, just like Apache County does in the Chinle, Ganado, and Fort Defiance locations. They also have one in Tuba City. So you can go to that location, Tuba City on election day. Doesn't matter what precinct you're in, you can vote there. Um, there's one in there's one location in Page, one in Williams, Grand Canyon Village, and then the rest of them are in Flagstaff. So this is just like, right, a lot, I know a lot of Navajo people, they may be commuting, they may be going back and forth between work. If you, you don't have to, in Cocomino, you don't have to make it back to your precinct um, on election day to vote. You can vote, if you're working in Flagstaff, you can go to Flagstaff and vote at one of their vote centers and your vote will count. Um, and then if we scroll down, these are their precinct based locations. So Coal Mine Chapter House, that's a, you know, if you're a registered voter in that, precinct, you have have to, you would have to vote at coal mine. You couldn't go to another precinct location and vote. So these are all the precinct based, that one else different. So these are all the precinct based um, locations. So all of these locations will be open on Tuesday for voters to vote at. You can see the locations next to them. And I think when you click them, it actually, I don't want to do it on this uh, presentation, but if you click it, it I think, I believe a map shows up and it shows what precincts it's associated with. So you can vote there. You know, if you're in coal mine, you can vote at your precinct based location. Or if you happen to be in Tuba City that day for work, you can go to the Tuba City office. Or if you're in Flagstaff, you can go to Flagstaff. So it allows you a little more flexibility um, in Cogamino um, 
on where you can vote. And then just like as it, with Apache County, Cocomino will have those um, access machines, express voting access machines um, available at all their precincts. So if you do go to coal mine and let's say that's not your right precinct, you were supposed to go to loop, they will have that machine behind them and they will, they should in theory. And I think that they actually have been doing this in practice pretty consistently. Um, they will, they will say, Hey, you're in the wrong precinct. You can go to loop or you can vote on this machine. We'll print out your ballot. Sign, you'll sign the, you know, again, you'll show them your IDs because we're always showing IDs in Arizona. Um, you'll show them your IDs, you'll sign the e-poll book, and then they'll print out your ballot from that machine and you'll be able to vote on it. And um, so they should do that. And I, I'm pretty confident they are doing it because they did it in the past election cycle. And this will not be the first election cycle that they've been doing this. Um, so they're pretty familiar and they train their poll workers pretty well on this process. And they only had one ballot rejected for out of precinct voting during the 2022 cycle, which I think is really the best indicator of how these processes are working. So, but again, if you do go to coal mine and they don't give you that option, let us know. We want to know. Um, uh, just uh, something else to note too about um, Cocomino, uh, voting in Cocomino is that of the Navajo Mountain location is uh, I think changing. It was, it has been at a warehouse the past couple cycles. In this cycle, due to some issues with the facilities, they're going to, they procured another uh, trailer to utilize for the community to vote. So just an F, I just want to get that FYI. If you have any people, any, if anyone from Navajo Mountain on the Arizona side is listening, you are going to see a different facility being used this election cycle than the last one. Um, and I, I think really do want to, I think want to give a shout out to the chapter because they have been working really closely with the county to try to make sure all the utilities and everything is up and running for that facility. So couldn't, we could not do this without the help of our local communities. Um, so that's Cocomino County. So as you can see, you know, this is one of the reasons voting in Arizona is so much fun. It's because depending on which county you're in, you, you're going to have a different process that you're going to follow. There's not a one size fits all that goes across the counties. Um, and just being aware of what county you're registered in, what kind of voting do they allow? Do they allow out of precinct voting? Do they, are they only doing precinct voting? Hopefully we'll help everyone kind of understand the, you know, what they, what the voters need to do on election day to cast their ballots. Um, so moving on from what is going to be happening on Tuesday, um, on March 19th, um, we're going, moving on to what is coming. Uh, you may or may not have heard that Arizona changed their primary date um, from being in August to being in July. <sighs> many reasons why this, not many reasons, a reason why this happened um, that I don't think, you know, we need to necessarily get into. It has to accommodate the recall time to make sure that the counties are able to adequately do uh, recall counting and that they can finalize the vote in time, um, in a timely manner. So enable, for them to be able to do this, this year and this year only, we've moved the date up to July. Um, and then in response to Arizona moving its date up to July 30th, so your primary this year, everybody in Arizona, July 30th will be your primary date. Mark it in red, as I, as I know everybody is doing with all their primary dates. Um, and then, but also the council, um, just I think it was last week, I believe it was as recent as last week, also passed the legislation to move up the Navajo primary date to July 30th too, as well, July 30th as well. So just an FYI um, for Arizona and the Navajo Nation election, right? Cause that applies to all Navajo Nation elections that are happening this year. The primary date will be July 30th. New Mexico, your state primary has not changed. Utah, your state primary has not changed. Arizona, your state primary has changed. July 30th, July 30th. And then Arizona across the nation, July 30th. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, and then I think I have a question. Um, let me see. Uh, sorry, just let me break it. Let's read my question here. Need Apache and Navajo County need vote centers. I understand depending on your Navajo Nation address. If your address is not in that precinct, you cannot vote. Some addresses don't 
have a voting precinct, for example, Oak Springs, they will get rejected and given a provisional ballot. Where can they get vote be counted? Um, for a vote, so just, in a, just to recap, vote, Navajo County does do vote centers. That's all they do. They don't do any precinct voting. So it's only Apache County that does pre, all precinct voting. Um, so again, for your, if you are located in the community of Oak Springs, it really depends on where your residence is. Um, where, cause it will determine where your residence, right? Cause your, the Oak Spring chapter boundaries are going to be different than the county boundaries. So I would encourage you to check with your, without knowing the exact location of the residence that we're discussing here in Oak Springs, you really need, should check with your, uh, county recorders. And I would say that if you have just registered to vote it this year, you should uh, in Apache County, hundred percent check with your county recorder on where, what precinct they placed you in. Because as you guys know, there's no addresses on the nation. Um, so a lot of times what people do when they register is they will draw their location, their resident location, or they'll put like a description, right? Like five miles down dirt road, blah, 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 east of whatever. Um, but if the person at the county is reading what, or and in, they could interpret what you put down different than what you meant. So one of the things that I know count, the county workers have always expressed to us is that it's really hard when someone says, I'm five miles east of Oak Springs Chapter House, right? That's where my residence is. Are you five miles directly, like as a crow flies east? Are you five miles down the road east? Like what kind of east are we talking about? And so sometimes they will reach out to the voter to try to get that clarification. If they aren't able to, they will just put the voter, they will guess. And they'll be like, we think it's five miles east as the crows will fly. And they'll put them in the precinct. That's five miles east of the chapter house. So these are things that you, it's really a good idea to check in, you know, and I, you know, Apache County County Recorder's Office is very friendly. They do a great job at, you know, interfacing with the community. It, um, Mr. Larry Noble is a county recorder. For Apache County, there's also several Navajos that's, you know, all Navajo staffs that work at those locations on the Navajo Nation. So a lot of people with, you know, if there are language issues that can help assist you guys with that. But I would definitely check, if, especially if this is your first time voting in Apache County. Um, so let's see. I see we have a just it's we're getting close to our time here. Um, but I just want to make sure. So we talked about you know, kind of how the different counties run their elections so that you guys are familiar with that for Tuesday's election cycle. Um, yeah, I see that there was also a comment, the county recorder advised us to use route numbers and route number and mile posts. I think that's a great, you know, great recommendation. The more, you know, using those route numbers and mile posts will really lessen the confusion that the recorders have, office has in placing where your residence is. So the more descriptive, the more routes and numbers you can use, the better. So really appreciate that comment. Um, so that's, not, you know, so we talked about where, how you guys can vote based on the counties that you're in for Tuesday, what that's going to look like for you, what options you should be, and information you should be provided. Just something we haven't talked about is language assistance. Um, and I do, you know, Navajo language is still covered under the voting Federal Voting Rights Act. So the counties are still required to provide um, assistance and materials in Navajo. So if you do go to vote, at any polling location in any county, um, both in or actually in any of the states, um, the county needs to be providing uh, Navajo voters that language assistance. So if you go to a polling location, no matter where, um, but since we're talking about Arizona, so still be Arizona, and you're not getting that language assistance, either you're not being, a, you know, there's no tra translator there, you're not being allowed to assist maybe a relative in translating, um, there's no materials being provided to you in Navajo. That's also something that we would like to, <laughs> would love to know that. Um, so this is really make sure that, you know, when anyone who needs that assistance is, should be getting assistance, either the county should be providing an interpreter or they should be allowing the voter to, per, to have assistance. And like if there is a relative um, there or, you know, and relative broadly, right, clan member, somebody who can assist them, they should be allowing that assistance to be provided to the voter who needs it, who doesn't, who needs that translation. So, and that's, again, across counties, across states, but, um, so talked about that. We talked about the change in the primary date for Arizona on July 30th. You guys have all written it on your calendars. You've added it to your iPhones with a reminder that will be the primary date. Um, and then just if you have not registered to vote yet, and I think it's really important to note the primary date change, um, because that date 
you count back from that date for the registration deadline. So registration deadlines in Arizona aren't like a particular day. It's not like July 1st, every year is your registration deadline. It's based on how far out you are from the election. So if you're for Arizona, you have to online registration deadline is 29 days before election day. And I know this is different from other states that require lots well, some states around us, Colorado, require same. You can register on the same day you vote. So you can go on election day, register to vote, and then vote a ballot. That is not the case in Arizona. You have to register 29 days before the election day. So for instance, if you're the primary is the 30th, July 30th, you have to register, count back 29 days. And it's that's 29 calendar days, not business days, calendar days before then. That's when your election deadline, your registration deadline is. Um, and so you have to go in, you either can go online. There are several ways you can register to vote online on the, uh, there's a website, election, Arizona election website that allows you to do all the stuff to register online. Um, you can register via mail, right? You can fill out a form. Some chapter houses will have the registration forms on located in the chapter house. You can go to the chapter house, pick up your form, fill it out, mail it in. It has to be postmarked 29 days before the election. Not, it doesn't have to be received by the county 29 days, but it has to be postmarked. It has to have that stamp from the USPS, United States Postal Service, 29 days before the election day. Or you can go to one of the uh, locations um, on the nation and register vote. And I will say, um, if you register, you can write, like, if you're from a veggie county, but you happen to be in Coca Tuba City for something, you can register to vote at the T Tuba City office. You don't have to register to vote necessarily in that particular county. I think it makes it a little easier. The counties do a pretty good job on sending registrations back and forth to each other. So they'll, you know, Cocomino will send it over to Apache, but it's just easier if you can do it at Apache County. So there's no issues on that. Um, and then just be cognizant of mailing dates. I became, during COVID made me very aware of the U.S. Postal Service routes and mailing times because it was the first time when Navo, a lot of Navajo citizens wanted to vote by mail because they did not want to go out, risk going out into the public. So we really had to track down the um, mail times. I will say the election procedure manual recommends, I think, seven days. You mail it seven days before the deadline. So in this case, seven days before the 29 day deadline hits. But let's be real, it takes probably 10 days for mail on the Navajo Nation. And I just, you know, I'd like to use my Apache County as the example, because Apache County mail, if you are in Window Rock and I mail something, it's going to go to Gallup, then it's going to go to Albuquerque, then it's going to go to Phoenix, it's going to go to Sholo, then it's going to go to St. John's. So that's the route your ballot will, your registration has to take or your ballot has to take in order to get to the place it's going to. Um, and for registration purposes, and we'll follow this, we'll have a, um, a more detailed discussion on mail ballots. I think as the election time gets closer, day gets closer, but um, for your registration, for purposes of registering to vote, if you're going to be doing that between now and the primary deadline, um, primary date, which is July 30th, um, you just need it postmarked, right? So you just need to get it to the Window Rock Post Office to stamp it. It doesn't matter if it takes 10 days to get to St. John's. It doesn't. It, as long as you get that stamp, just get Window Rock to stamp it. So if you take it after hours, right, after Window Rock closes, and this is another great thing, our postal offices all operate on different hours. So you have to know your office hours, of your local postal service, because you need to do that stamp. It doesn't matter if you dropped it in after hours because they didn't stamp it. So you need them to stamp it by 29 days for the election date. And then it will take however long it get, takes to get to the county. But know that, know that we're taking, we're probably, you're, especially in Apache, you're looking at about a 10 day um, cycle to get your mails to St. John's on a, you know, some, seven to 10 days, but I would count for 10 days. So that I think is all I have. Um, like I said, we'll probably have some, we'll, this will be a series, this is the first of a series. So we'll be having, we'll have more on voter registration. We'll go more in depth in uh, uh, later videos on what you need to have on the voter registration. You know, what, in, what information you need to really make sure is on there, how, you know, how you can photo, follow up on voter registration. And then we'll have one on um, once the locations get set for the primary and the election cycles, we'll provide another one so everyone knows 
if there are any updates or any changes in how those elections are going to be run for July and November. Um, and so that's that's it. And I think I'll just, I don't know if there are any other questions that I that I can answer at this time. Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to our lovely host, 